hi guys welcome back to another youtube video it's your tutor disha today i'll be talking about the phloem and to ensure that you grasp the concept for your upcoming examination i'll be revisiting the phloem tissue the sieve element and companion cell translocation from the source to the sink and how pressure flow enables translocation to occur let's start with phloem tissue unlike the xylem phloem is a living tissue it's composed of living cells the sieve elements and companion cells and they are surrounded by sclerenchyma and parenchyma let's look at the functional units of the phloem the sieve element and its companion the companion cell. Now the sieve elements, they are cells that are long and narrow in structure and they group together from end to end to form what is called a sieve tube. And each sieve element is connected at their ends by a sieve plate and the sieve plates they are perforated. Now it's important for you to note that the sieve element cells, they lack nucleus however for the companion cells which are attached to the sieve elements hence their name companion they are much much more thinner with an abundance of cytoplasm they have a nucleus and they have many mitochondria why would the companion cells which are smaller have more cellular compartments than the sieve elements which are larger. The sieve element's main function is to translocate the products of photosynthesis from the source to the sink, but they lack the major organelles that are required to drive this translocation. Hence, they have the companion cells to perform the metabolic functions of these sieve elements. Translocation is the movement of products of photosynthesis, for example, sucrose, from the source to the sink. And the part of the plant that produces sugars is called the source. The leaf is a source because it captures light from the sun to fix carbon dioxide into sugars. And the part of the plant that stores or even use the product of photosynthesis is called the sink. And examples of the sink include roots, tubers, and fruits. Let me remind you that you must know how the phloem loading in the leaves occur against a concentration gradient. Now, as stated before, translocation is due to pressure flow in the phloem. So, according to the pressure flow hypothesis, sugars are actively loaded into the sieve element at the source through the process of active transport. Now, as sugars are moved into the sieve element, the concentration of the salt or the sugar increases and that's going to drive water from the adjacent xylem into the sieve element also. If water moving into the sieve element with the sugars, then a pressure gradient builds up at the source. And that then causes translocation of sugars from one sieve element to another sieve element and thus throughout the sieve tube from the source to the sink. And at the sink, we have unloading of sugars as well as water moving back into the xylem. Now, before we go, we need to look at two more things. As Kate Biology students, you need to visualize the structure of the phloem. And you're not going to get those pretty and easy pictures that you see in a textbook. You need to familiarize yourself with phloem as it appears under an electron microscope. So as you can see here, this is an entire sieve element. And it's connected to another sieve element here, forming an entire sieve tube. At the end of each sieve element, 
Here you have the sieve plates. The sieve plates are perforated. So we can have sugar and water molecules moving from one sieve element to another sieve element as they move down their pressure gradient. Beside the sieve element, we have the companion cells here. Remember I said that the companion cells were much smaller than the sieve tube, which has to be larger to house the sucrose. And as you can see also, the companion cells has more cell organelles. Final topic that you want to ensure that you revisit for the examination is experimental evidence for and against the pressure flow hypothesis. Think about the aphids and how they obtain sucrose from plant sap. Think about the radioactive evidence of sucrose in the phloem and so on. All right, guys, use these four pointers here as a guide in your preparation for the flow and content of the upcoming examination. Good luck and make me proud.